Amen. Lift your Bible up and uh, we're going to make a quick confession. Say it with me, this is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I have absolutely everything my Bible says I have. For I am a believer, not a doubter. For faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Amen. Praise God. If you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. We're going to start teaching on the theme for this year, Possessing the Promise. We've been going through um, last year, we made some great strides last year, taking new territory, had the implication of overcoming every struggle that stood in the way, just like the children of Israel had to overcome the giants that were in the land. Unfortunately, their uh, forefathers and ancestors, uh, their uh, fathers did not uh, overcome and possess the promise uh, because they allow fear to detour them and bad reports to shake them. And so the challenge of a strong enemy detoured them from forcibly going in to what God had promised them. And so they had to go back into the wilderness and uh, about 40 years uh, they wandered in the wilderness and perished until the second generation arose, their children from the age of 19 on up arose and became adults and they were the ones that went in under Joshua's rule. Amen. And so they began to um, uh, identify and destroy all the enemies that stood in the way. And so they were able to take the new territory and possess the promise. The promises of God are our inheritance. Anytime God wants to get you into a new level of living, a new level of life, a more quality of life, he will give you a promise, a prophecy, or a principle. Once you begin to um, receive that promise or practice that principle or begin to war with that prophecy, you'll see things begin to manifest in your life. Along with the title God gave me, uh, Possessing the Promise, he also said, that uh, this would be the year of manifestation. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, this is what I want. Let me, let me prep you. I just want you to listen to my content real good this morning because it will be prophetic. Um, so don't allow anything I'm going through to get you off focus. Okay? So don't, don't let my challenge make you listen to the quality of my voice more than the quality of my words. Okay, um, because this is very prophetic to you. Um, and, and what the Lord gave me for tonight is just kind of blows my mind that what, what we're about to enter into. We've entered into a season of manifestation and we have to learn how to work with it. You gotta work with God's system of doing things in order to, um, to embrace what he's promised you. Now, a promise given by God is a prophetic word. It's, it's a prophetic word to you. Um, prophecy always determines what's to come. It, it's, it's something that revealed by the Spirit about your life that confirms what you know or informs you of what you don't know. Got it? So anytime God gives you a word, it's prophetic in nature. And when God speaks a word, it is not alterable it cannot be altered which which to you got to be a source of security Amen. for God to give you such a guarantee that he would speak something over your life pertaining to you you must understand there really is nothing that can stop that from coming to pass in my life amen, amen. amen somebody yeah. and so and so you got to know that even though you face dark days challenging circumstances 
frenemies. <laughs> Got it? No matter what you face, you, you have to realize if God said it, that settles it. And no matter what I'm facing, I'm not going to magnify the obstruction. I'm going to look through it to my victory in God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible is, pro is a prophetic book. It's just, you just got to know that all of this stuff that we read, um, some of it is historic, some of it is still futuristic, yet to come to pass, some of it is present. Um, experience that we're going through now but the whole book is a prophetic book and so you need to know this book so that when God begins to vocally speak things to you you'll have a, a, a premise by which you can you can verify the voice of God in your heart and what he's saying to you we saw prophecy first in the garden God had to uh, secure man's future by giving him a promise. Let's look at that verse number 15. Verse 15. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're a student of the word, you understand that this is the altercation between Lucifer. Lucifer was a fallen angel. In fact, he got his name changed to devil because he's an adversary of God. And so when he fell, he, uh, he was kicked out of heaven, his original estate, and kicked into the earth. Now, in the earth, the reason he was kicked into the earth was because in the center or the core is a holding place called hell. It's, 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 a, it's a fiery pit. And the scripture says hell was created for the devil and his angels. Yeah, yeah. Got it? So God wanted them out of his presence and close to their, their abode where he was about to, to send them. When they got into the earth, Lucifer thing is always to rule. He wants to be like God. And he was so taken back when God created a being like himself. You, you know who I'm talking about, right? Genesis 1, 26, 27, God created man in his image and his likeness gave him dominion over the works of his hands. So, so Lucifer actually wanted that spot. Got it? So he's very angry. He's, he's upset because he was heralding himself as a prince and as a god. He said he would lift his throne up beside the stars of God. And he was trying to make uh, you know, quite a bit of to do about himself. And then God had to kick him out. But not before he had tricked and seduced a third of heaven's host. So you, you can understand there was three regiments in heaven. One led by the archangel Michael, warring angels. One led by the archangel Gabriel, communication angels. And one led by Lucifer, the worshiping angels. And that third fell with him from their original estate. They were kicked out into the earth rim. So here with us, we have unseen forces that we have to deal with every day. And we're not smart. We don't know the word. We won't understand what we're dealing with. We'll think we're dealing with flesh and blood. We'll think we're dealing with people. When in actuality, there's a spirit behind the person that's against you. And you can continue to fight that person with all your might and get nowhere. Because even if you diminish that person, that same spirit would jump on somebody else and the attack would come from a different direction. Uh, are y'all helping? Okay, so you have to understand our world is infested. Just like the flu came into America, that's what the demonic spirits did in our world. They're in here. So God, he told me, he says, now, I need you to change your focus and, and prayer priority. I still want you to pray for Israel, but I need you to put America on top of Israel. And now pray for America first, then Israel. I said, well, why are you telling me to do that? He said, because America has let down their guard and their defenses and their borders, and they think they're fighting terrorists when their biggest terrorist is the demonic spirits that are influxing into American society 
and changing our allegiance from being a godly Christian nation to being a heathenistic, pagan-worshipping, Babylonian, Egyptian-bound nation. So it's important for us now to go to the word. We have to live by the word. You're not going to have victory over this darkness being ignorant. You have to study the word of God, go to church, be instructed, be empowered, and get into the corporate agreement to where we as a church body can push back the forces of hell and stop their strategy from being manifested in our midst amen so let's see where it started Genesis 3 and 15 we, we we said that he came in seduced the woman she fell she gave to her husband the fruit and he knowingly ate uh, I can kind of understand you know when you have a real good thing You don't want to give it up. You can look at me crazy if you want to, but I know I, I kind of sense what Adam was going through because I got one. You got it? So I, you know, we can all wish that Adam had not a fail, but you know, that was bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. That stuff was so good to Adam, he said, I know I'm going wrong, Father, but I gotta go with this. All right, I'll leave y'all alone. Anyway, God promised them because they fell from grace, they was now separated from him. He had to promise, he had to give them a promise, a prophetic word that, that he would rectify the situation. Right. And you would think to yourself, well, why did God take on that responsibility? He didn't cause them to fall. But every father is responsible for what comes out of his loins. Amen. And God took responsibility as a father my children have fallen, and therefore I will do whatever I need to do to redeem them and reconcile them back to myself. And that's why he gave them the prophetic word that it would be a seed that came out of the woman's loins that would crush the head of the serpent. Uh, go to Luke chapter 4. So that was first promise the prophetic word went to Adam and Eve um, that 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 recovery or how we say restoration and redemption would happen and they would once again be empowered to step on the devil on. see they, they they lost something when they complied with his will Amen. got it um, when they complied to the enemy strategy they lost dominion. Right, right. Everything that they had possessed that God had given them now went into his hands. So God really, he had to get it back through the, pro through the process of creation. He had to, if man gave it up, then man had to get it back. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's, it's the law of, uh, of balance. It's, if one man can cause all to fail, then also one man can cause all to win. Amen. So, so then here's that man in verse number 18, Luke 4 and 18. We see God gave a prophecy. It was a prophetic word. We knew that Adam and Eve needed redemption when they fell, but it wasn't the season for the appearing of the sun. Are y'all listening to me? Because season and times are totally in God's control. And God had now in his, in the counsel of his own will, decided when the time of the virgin birth should take place. That's, that's excellent. All right. In verse number 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of them all were in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say to them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears what he was saying is what the father spoke in the garden has now come 
What he was saying is, I'm the seed of the woman that God promised would come through 42 generations to put the devil at naught and destroy all darkness and set free humanity. Hallelujah. I, I, I love this. I love this because, because before Jesus made the statement, he had to be tested, tried, and proven. And just before he made this statement, the Bible says the Holy Spirit had driven him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. For 40 days he was out there in the wilderness, tempted in every area such as you and I are tempted. Talk to me somebody. But the Bible says he did not fall. And in the last of the, of the, of the trying and the testing, the devil himself showed up and began to present opposition and challenges to Jesus. And he began to tell him, now look, if you be the son of God, he was saying, do you really know who you are? He said, now if you be the son of God, you're hungry, you've been fasting 40 days, 40 nights, why don't you go ahead and turn these stones into bread? Just, you know, prove to me that you are the son of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Now you gotta understand, if Jesus had not passed these tests in the wilderness, he could not say that about the prophetic word that had been spoken so many thousands of years before his appearing. He had to go through the trying and the testing and pass the test so that when he read the scripture, he would be identified as the seed of the woman that would overcome the treachery and challenges of the enemy. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. And because he overcame Satan on all those levels, he was able to come down in the power of the Spirit and then read the Scripture and say, I'm the one that this prophetic utterance was written about. I'm here now to set the captives free. I'm here to give sight to those that are blind. I'm here to cause the lame to be able to walk. Our freedom showed up in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Go to Romans 16, 20. So his, his coming had a season to it. So, so the prophetic word, this, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah, I want the Holy Spirit to deal with me. Yeah, yeah, come on in, Holy Spirit. He's going to deal with me here and tonight. But the prophetic word is, um, is, uh, is outstanding. When God speaks a word. See, now, you got to be careful of prophesying out of your mind. See, that's, 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 that's why I keep strict controls over my services because I don't want flesh trying to act up in church. You got it? That's, that's why I just don't allow folk to raise up in the congregation and start saying stuff. I want to prove that you actually heard from the Holy Spirit who is the author of prophecy that you really did hear from him. Because we don't need you saying stuff out of your head. Because when you say stuff out of your head, there's no manifestation of the heavenly bread. Come on, somebody. I need for God to use you to speak because when you say what God says, you release a prophetic word. Inside of the prophetic word is the power to produce fruit and the power to release manifestation and the seal of time and seasons. Uh -huh. You better pull from me. I'll shut this thing down. All right. You better pull from me. I'm you, come on, pull now, pull. Amen, amen, amen. So when a prophetic word is given, it has been designed with the DNA of timing and seasons. Right, right, right. That when you accept the word, see, it won't come to pass until you accept it and embrace it and confess it. You must give voice to the word of God, which is a prophetic word. And until you begin to release it out of your mouth, it will not be activated in your life. So when you release it out of your mouth, you unpack the word. Once I begin to say, I, I am, uh, say, let's deal with sickness. Uh, by his stripes, I am healed. 
that's a prophetic word because the way God deals with issues in the earth is that he sends his word got it to take care of issues so that when you're sick the Bible says in Psalms he sent his word and heal them we see the reference over in matthew's chapter i think it's chapter 8 when uh, the centurion came to jesus and said my servant is sick unto death i'm not worthy that you should come to my house but speak the word only and my servant shall be made well and jesus said i am amazed that this kind of faith is in the earth and the, and the centurion said, oh, you, you got to understand, master. I know authority. I understand authority. I understand that the word you speak has authority to complete its mission. It cannot return to God void, but it must accomplish the thing wherein it was sent to do. So packed up in that prophetic word is the manifestation of fruit, the manifestation of power, and the release of seasons. You're talking about, Lord, when is my time? Well, if you start confessing the prophetic word that he put in your spirit, you would unpack your season. Uh, no. The set time, yea, the set time has come to favor the church. And, 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 oh, I got a lot to say about that, but I shouldn't release it before the time. That's for my next lesson. But the prophetic word is, is awesome. And see, you got to not get spooky with this. You, got, you got, can't get spooky because any prophetic word can be confirmed by Scripture. In fact, because the Bible is prophetic, you can take its phrases and put voice to it and prophesy to your situation. Ooh, that's, that's, that's rich stuff. That's rich stuff. Okay, I, I'll, I'll take you to scripture. I'll take you to some scripture. All right. All right. Uh, oh, I don't want to deal with him. I was, I was having to deal with the dragon. Romans 16, 20, it says, And God, the God of peace, shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Let's see. Holy Spirit, help me so I don't have to go into a long exhortation. Okay. The God of peace shall bruise what? Satan, Satan where? Under your feet. When? Shortly. When? Shortly. When? Shortly. When? Shortly. Back in the, in the book of Genesis, uh, when, 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 when um, you know, God had to promise his children, I'm going I'm to I'm come get you. I'm going to recover you. And understand this. Because of the law of balance, I got to bring forth seed out of the womb of the woman to overcome all the power of the enemy to bring in legal restitution. So there has to be a man born through a woman that can live a spotless life that I can empower to redeem all of man back. Amen? Amen. Jesus was that man. He was the second Adam. So he comes and he can do his sacrifice for all the sins of mankind has now purchased for us redemption and the right to become the sons of God. Yes, 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 yes. Now, because we have through Jesus been returned to the original spiritual state of the, of the garden, uh, don't make me do this. In the garden before they sinned, they were the what? Children of God. Right? No sin. They were, they, they, God birthed these children. He made them bodies, blew into them the breath of life. So out of him came their spirits, and they were born of God. When they sinned, they died to God, 
and we're separated from them, from him. When Jesus comes and pays the price for their reconciliation, now everyone that receives Jesus is now born again and becomes the sons of God. Yeah. Now the prophetic word to Adam was, I am going to use the seed of the woman to crush the devil's head. Mm -hmm. But then after Jesus comes into the rim and he has done his work, now he's, by Romans uh, what, what chapter is that? Romans, Romans 16. Romans 16. By this time, he's already out of here in Acts chapter 1. He's ascended, but he said, I have all power in my hands. Mm -hmm. Now, he that believeth on me shall live. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So now, Romans, Paul is telling them, now God shall do what? God shall do what, Ian? Crush who? Isn't that the problem? Yes, yes, it is. No, come on, y'all. Come on with me. It's not trick. It's no trick question. <laughs> the problem with our earth is that guy got kicked out of his estate, the jealous guy, right. with a third of the heavenly host, came into to the earth, and he fights humanity because he hates that we have this inheritance. Right. 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 Am I right? right? So when Jesus comes along and defeats him, yeah. uh -huh. then turns around and gives us dominion over him, right then the prophecy that God gave to Adam in the garden has now come true that all humanity has now come back if they receive Jesus. We now can put the devil where? See, 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 you got to read that. Read that. Read it again, Ian. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Hold up. Under whose feet? He said under your feet. Under your feet. Everyone that's received Jesus, God has given you to crush Satan under your feet. What are you putting up with? How long are you going to put up with it? Why are you letting him into your life and take and steal and destroy when God's prophetic word to you is that the devil is under your feet? Devil's where? Under Okay, okay. Uh, nah. uh, okay. I guess people really don't put two and two together. They don't understand that when the devil came here, he brought stuff with him. When we got into sin, there was no death. The sin brought death. Got it? So when the enemy came to the earth, he provided a lot of what we go through at, that we call the curse. So the, really the only way to overcome these deficits is you've got to go to the Lord of light. Amen. Amen. Who gives you the power to overcome all darkness. Go to um, 2 Peter 1. Is this it? This is this what I want? Yeah, 2 Peter 1. Second Peter 1, verse number 17. It says, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Think on it, think on it, think on it, think on it. Hallelujah. Think on that heaven opened up and a voice came out of heaven. It was Jehovah's voice. There's no one like Jehovah. <laughs> Scripture says, there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. 
where until you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is incredible. Uh, because they heard the voice. Uh, we saw the voice in the garden. Yes, we did. When God it said, it said and, and, and Adam and Eve hid from the, from the voice of God walking in the garden. And then we saw the voice again at the Jordan. When Jesus told John, you, you have to baptize me so that we can fulfill the will of God. And then the heavens opened up and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well. And, and then they said, and then Jesus now uh, takes his boys up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And there uh, uh, it was Moses and Elias that came to talk to Jesus concerning his death and concerning the things after his death. And Peter and John, James saw it and said, Master, let us make tabernacles for, you know, three tabernacles. And then the heavens opened again and the voice of God said, this is my son, hear ye him. Each time the voice of God spake, which gives me this revelation, we have to be very sensitive to discern the voice of God speaking to us. Okay, why, Pastor? Why? Go to Psalms 29 and 4. And I'm going to close after this one if that's all right with you guys. Okay, and we'll just take it up next week. All right. All right. So, so you want to be able to discern the voice of God. Now, you understand when the voice speaks, it's a sure word of prophecy. It, now, what does it do? It brings light in darkness. That, that's incredible. It does what? It brings light in darkness. And then it says, the day star will arise in your heart. Uh, that means that when he speaks, there's a transformation that takes place in you. Oh, y'all not hearing me. When God speaks to you, it's not just a word to tickle your, your ears. Amen. That word is packed. That when you embrace it, it makes you pregnant. Wow. Amen. 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 I got some pregnant people in this, in this room. There's some pregnant people in this room. Okay, 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 all right. all right. Let's see how I want to challenge this. Okay, so now you're pregnant. How many know that when you're pregnant, you have to carry it? Come on, Dr. So, so you got this. I'm comparing the prophetic word to a pregnancy. So here you are, impregnated by your husband, by your husband. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Impregnated. And, 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 and you know, some, I don't want to start preaching. Sometime, sometime a woman, when she don't know that she's pregnant yet, starts getting morning sickness. Because her, her condition has changed. Her state, she didn't know her state had changed. And there was something going on, on the inside of her that she didn't know was going on until a manifestation started telling her that, hey, look, you, you are not the sa in the same state like you used to be. So you got to stop looking at, you know, all these challenges as, as, as deficits. Sometimes these challenges are there to inform you that you're not the same person that you used to be. So, some, sometimes sometime these challenges are here to tell you that that is something inside of you that you don't know about that is a threat to me on the outside of you. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. And then you get past the morning sickness. Then, then, then you start getting out of shape. 
<laughs> Belly start growing. Those things start growing too. Why y'all gonna punk me like that? That's why a man can't blame a woman when she get pregnant about her weight. You, 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 you can't jump on her like that. She go through all kind of transformations trying to bring life into the world. Hallelujah. Anyway, by the, tri the third trimester, that thing is so big. <coughs> you, 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 you ate for two. You didn't drank for two. You carrying this thing around inside of you and it's uncomfortable. It's inconvenient. Come on, talk to me, ladies. At least the ladies know what I'm talking about. Come on. And, 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 and sometimes it frustrates you to such a degree, all you want is it out of you. You just get this thing up out of me. Come, I want you out of me. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, ain't nothing outside of you change, but everything within you has changed. And you're impregnated, and you got life all down inside of you, and you know you're coming to a season of time to where you got to push forth to bring forth life. Come on, talk to me. That's what a prophetic word will do from God. It will be deposited in your spirit, and to the degree that you allow it to form in you, and to dwell in you, and to grow in you, you have to embrace that word. You can't deny it. You can't refute it. Or you will pass your day of giving birth. You must say, God, I thank you for this prophetic word. It don't look like I'm great. It don't look like I'm headed for anything. In fact, it's dark around here, but I receive what you have deposited in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I embrace this prophetic word about my future. And so, and so you get to the point where you begin to be aggravated. That's because you're aggravated because so much is coming against you. So much discomfort, so much inconvenience. You're having things being taken from you on the exterior. But you understand I'm called for something greater than what I'm experiencing now. Come on, somebody, talk to me in here. Ah, uh, talk to me in here because you're right on the edge of a breakthrough. You're right on the edge of bringing something to birth. God has spoken to you and in the prophetic word is a time and a season and your season has come I'm going to teach you how to discern your season alright I said one scripture didn't I didn't I say one scripture Psalms 29 and 4 this is this is incredible. It says, we know the whole book is, is prophetic. The voice of the Lord is powerful. <laughs> Heaven opens up. This is my son, hear ye him. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Lucifer, I'm gonna lift my uh, my uh, my uh, throne up uh, against the stars of God, and God says, Michael, get him out of my sight. Wow. The voice of the Lord is. Oh. He looks about the expanse, and there's nothing around, and he says, ah, oh, I don't like this emptiness, so I'll make me a world. And God begins to call stars into existence, the constellations into existence. God begins to speak. His word is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. And then it says, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. What is this majesty thing? What is that majesty? Well, I exegeted the word and it means sovereignty, full power, and supreme authority. Oh. So, so the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. So I'm going to interpret that for you. The voice of the Lord is sovereign, all-powerful, with supreme authority. Yes, oh my God is right. Because when a word from God comes into your life, it is all powerful. Are you listening to me? It is, 
It has supreme authority. Yes, it does. Talk to me. Uh -huh. And it's sovereign. Yes, yes. Sovereign means that whatever he says rules. Amen. Amen. So the devil's working with you, right? And darkness is all around you. And his strategy is to take you down. But God has spoken a sovereign word. Oh, y'all better, y'all better hear me. My word cannot come back to me void. It must produce the thing I sent it to do. When God gives your word, his sovereign word begins to work on the darkness around you. His sovereign word, because see, it has a season and a time and it begins to multiply manifestations and fruits in your life. And so you all of a sudden see yourself start changing from the inside out because there's a prophetic word giving birth to the elevation of favor in your life. And so now darkness begins to move back away from you. <laughs> what the devil intended for your evil God has start turning it around. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. God would take all the evil, all the, that the enemy tried to use to take you down to your grave and God allow him some success. Because God is going to empty your nest of all the filth that will hold you back. All the sin and the weights that would prevent you from fulfilling your destiny. So trials have a way of purging you. You may be in the wilderness right now. But that's a good thing for you. Because it's purging you of all the poisons. All the corruption that will attack the promise when it's manifested in your life. Your pride must come down so that your humble spirit can take over when god lifts you high and makes you a king he cannot have arrogance in you he cannot have pride and egotism in you you must surrender to the voice of your god give somebody a high five and say he's talking to you he's talking to you i gotta quit i gotta quit but uh I, I got to do something. That's why when, uh, when you speak or give voice to the word of God, you're part of his prophetic system. You put voice to his word, you agree with his plan for your life. You're actually prophesying. The devil wants you to magnify where you are. But where you're going is more important than where you are. That's why you say, this is what the Lord wants for my life. You start prophesying it. Hallelujah. Let's see if I got this. Uh, I, I want my, my, my pastors to stand up. Where's Kent? Kent Durrell. He's not here? Oh, Kent. All right. Uh, come up here, Kent. Give me some anointing oil. This is Kent Durrell, correct? Pastor, uh, you gonna stand behind him? If you would come, Pastor Lord, would you come? All my pastors just stand right behind him. Uh, he's challenged with fourth. The fourth stage is uh, metastasis, cancer of the liver. Cancer of the liver. Stand here, sir. <clears throat> That's your brother. Yeah. God bless you, Keith. Amen. Uh, would you all just get in agreement with us? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a cancer survivor, or should I say conqueror?
Amen. You need a miracle. God gives miracles. This church believe in the God of miracles. We're going to put our faith together and we're going to make you a focus and believe for God. To, first, he's going to do a work in you, but we want him to do a work in all those physicians as well. Everybody that has anything to do with your recovery, we want them under the master's control. Because many times they'll misdiagnose. They'll, they won't give you the right stuff. They can make mistakes because they're human. But if our God has them, they won't make those mistakes. Amen. We don't care how he chooses to do it. We just care that he does. Stand on your feet. Point your hands this way. Father, that's right. There's no one like Jehovah. There's no one like you. You're a God of miracles. God of mercy. This man has sinned. You said we can ask for forgiveness and you would forgive him. So the devil has no place in him to hold him in condemnation. We fully come in agreement as a church body. I as a pastor, priest of this house and apostle, anoint my hands with oil. You said that oil represents the power of your spirit. And when we anoint the sick with oil and pray the prayer of faith, they shall recover. This man is at his fourth stage. And we refuse to give in to it. We pray for all his physicians. The Holy Spirit would take control of their minds, the diagnosis, the remedies they come up with. The Spirit of God will now be in full charge. Now, I lay my hands on this man. Put your hands all over him. I anoint him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I command sickness to leave his body. Jesus, I stand in proxy of you. As my hand is upon him, your hand is upon him. I speak concerning 1 Peter 2.24 That by your stripes He is made whole I ask for the Holy Spirit to minister Hope to him And stir his faith These are the darkest hours of his life That shall produce the greatest testimony That he could ever give to humanity I speak by the authority of Jesus I curse cancer in your body. I command it to withdraw itself from you. And release the healing anointing of Jesus upon your life. By his stripes, I call you healed. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I say yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Did anybody have a word here? Anybody have a word here? Any word? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I want you to look past this and look at yourself and meditate yourself, spreading the word and giving testimony to the goodness of God. That God would not let you die but he let you live so you can declare his goodness in the earth. Amen. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Amen. Somebody scream with joy and gladness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now, let's do this. Uh, be seated just for a minute. Bow your heads. All Christians are praying. 
let's see if we can get some people's needs met. If you're in this room and you're not born again, that means you have no relationship with God. It doesn't mean you don't know about God. What it means is that you have not yet asked him to become your savior. If you have not asked him to become your savior, you're still under the prince of darkness. And things are loose in your life and things are reaping havoc in your life because there's no power of God in your life. To get God in your life, you must come his way. You must comply to his process. You can't tell him how to do it. He tells us how to do it. What he said is, my son now is the door to me. If you receive my son, you get access to me. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You have to believe that, receive that, and you must comply with it. Today, if you've never asked the Lord Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior, that God will now become your Father, I want to pray with you. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. I'm not going to put a mic in your face for you to make a testimony. I will simply lead you in the prayer so you'll know without a doubt at the end of that prayer that you are born again and that you are a child of God and have right to the inheritance of the kingdom. If you're listening to me now and you say, I need to do that, I need you to raise your hand right now, right where you are. Let me pray with you and let this be the last day you be without the Father.